Hello, I'm Richard Emmett, the Program Director of the Blue Ridge Music Center, and I'd like to welcome you to our discussion series, Deep Roots, Many Voices. This series is part of a project by the Blue Ridge Music Center, exploring diversity and inclusion in roots-based music. In this discussion series, we pair two musicians in each episode to talk about issues related to race, ethnicity, and sexual orientation, how these issues have been part of their personal stories, and the importance of celebrating diversity in the music world. These discussions highlight contributions to American roots-based music from the many voices that make up our nation and give us hope for a rich and diverse musical future. The series was coordinated and conceived by Blue Ridge Music Center Associate Director Marianne Kobach, who also moderates these discussions. I hope you enjoy the series. Thank you for joining us. And now here's Marianne to introduce you to our guests. Hello, and welcome to Deep Roots Many Voices. I'm Marianne Kovach, the Associate Program Director for the Blue Ridge Music Center. And today I'm speaking with Earl White and Trey Wellington about their experiences playing bluegrass and old time music. Earl White is a dancer and an old time fiddler who I first met back in the 70s when he was dancing with the Greengrass Cloggers. After, he, after years of working in the healthcare field, he's now retired from his day job, and he and his family live on a farm near Floyd, Virginia. Not one to ever sit still, Earl hosts music camps and workshops on the farm, as well as operating a bakery with his wife. Somewhere in there, he also finds time to play the fiddle with the Earl White String Band. Trey Wellington is a bluegrass banjo player from Ash County, North Carolina. He started playing as a teenager, going to fiddler's conventions and playing with the band Cane Mill Road, and has since gone on to form the Trey Wellington Band. Trey recently moved to Raleigh to join the Pinecone organization as their communications manager. In this conversation, Earl and Trey talk about their experiences as black musicians, performing at bluegrass and old-time music events, how things have changed over the years, and how they're working to create a better future. Here they are, Earl White and Trey Wellington. Enjoy. In old time music, um, throughout the years, there have been black players and uh, in bluegrass, it really kind of started as white men. And uh, I'm just wondering, not only how you have you encountered that and also especially at college, because you went to um, East Tennessee and, you know, you were probably one of the few black people in um, who was a part of their program there in the bluegrass side. Yeah. Um... Definitely in bluegrass, that's something like, you know, I have um, some really good friends in the old time community as well um, that I talk to quite a bit. And we talk about this issue um, quite a bit. It comes up just like there is, it seems to be more black people definitely in the old time side of things. Um, for one reason or another, um, it just seems like the old time community is a little bit more accepting generally. Um, like I said, I'm not going to speak on the whole thing, but generally more accepting then the bluegrass community and I think um, it's kind of something I look at, you know, maybe that I've seen is, you know, in old time, it seems to be there's a lot more historical side of things, context with things like when people are like, I've noticed when I went to like old time jams, like people will like, you know, when they're calling a tune, they'll like tell me a little bit about the tune, even if we're just sitting there jamming, which is really cool to me. And um, I think there's more history there than in bluegrass, you know, people will just call a tune and say like, oh, here's this song. And then like, it's just expect people know it and there's not really much back um, history to it. And I wonder if that's part of it kind of dealing with, um, especially with race issues is because you're not hearing kind of like a history of this story. Like you don't hear that this tune came from like Lead Belly or somebody like that. You're just hearing, you know, oh, here's this bluegrass tune you should just know. And I think that was, um, I think definitely I deal with quite a bit of that, especially going, like when you were saying I went to ETSU, I dealt with a bunch of, um, a bunch of racism there in that program, um, as far as with other students, um, especially, and, um, I don't, it was kind of one of those things at first, I was just like, why are they doing this? This is like like we're at a university trying to grow and be more open-minded to other ideas and why are they doing this? And, um, you know, 
they were edu- they you know they were educated in the matter it seemed like when they were talking about it but then their actions didn't portray it so i think a lot of it is getting over um people getting over their roots you know a lot of these people were raised in probably families that were pretty um racially biased and i think a big one of the biggest things i saw is like so many of these people just kind of i want to i don't want to say stuck in their ways but i think that's what it was really um you know saying some pretty i'm not going to go into specifics here some i've got told some pretty terrible things by my fellow classmates at etsu and had to um, endure a lot and it did it was very trying um and it made it got me discouraged in the music but then i kind of realized at a point that i'm like the only like as far as in like directly like i guess like bluegrass music i'm one of the only um three finger banjo players that is um out playing you know um there's definitely you know i probably know of like 10 altogether bluegrass banjo players that are black and but i'm one of the only ones out performing the music and kind of getting it to a wider audience to a point um at least, like I said, the three finger styles, and I just kind of realized I need to be like a beacon of beacon of hope for this music to a point to like show people that I'm black and I'm doing this, and I love the music, and I'm not going to let other people take things I love away from me. Oh, great, fantastic! That's, yeah. yeah, and I I think also I would just want to add to that. I think when you look at you know the difference between old time and bluegrass music. Well, the old time music was not necessarily a performance oriented music. And even when you had uh, string bands that were touring, like the Georgia Yellow Hammers, you know, you got all these bands that were touring. Well, uh, Jim and Andrew Baxter played with a white string band and a lot of it was on radio. But whenever they played with this band, it was not uh, led on the fact that um, that he was that. (laughs) the fiddler was black, you know, that the Baxters were, were, were black. Um, but either way, listening to it, because you couldn't see them, you couldn't tell the difference whether they were black or white. So in a similar sense, um, the bluegrass music segued into more of a, of a um, performance oriented music. And when you look at the history of how blacks were not allowed to perform to white audiences, hmm. well, the audiences that were being uh, uh, performed to most were the white audiences. And therefore, if you didn't see a black person playing this music, you know, on the stage, then you couldn't make that connection. There's no connection to black people as playing music. Even if you look at a uh, country singer, uh, Charlie Pride, you know, when I was growing up, I loved his, <laughs> I loved hearing this guy sing, you know, he was a country singer. Um, but again, in the black community, because it wasn't uh, my baby done left me or, you know, some other aspect of soul music, you know, the majority of blacks that I grew up with did not listen to it, didn't have an affinity to it. So, yeah, but like I said, being that beacon out there and that's the way I feel about it, too, just getting out there and like I know of a handful of other black fiddlers but they're not out there playing the old time string band music, you know, and yeah. you gotta be out there doing it. Yeah. And I agree with that. Um, especially, you know, your comment about the, um, you know, with it not being a music that is, there's a ton of black people in that a lot of the time, the black community does not hear about these artists. Uh-huh. And I definitely um, today, you know, I, a lot of that is like, you know, with um, rap and hip hop, you right. know, um a lot of people associate like they want to call like black like hip-hop and rap music like black people's music and you know music's not a race it's a it's a form of music you know like anybody can play any kind of music they want to if they want to you know and um yeah i mean definitely i just think taking these stigmas away that the musics are to a certain race is a very important thing in growing. Oh, very much so.